We'll show a few methods for finding inverse matrices. The first one is using augmented matrices, and this is a good method because it extends to larger matrices. So I'll show it with 2x2, two two, but it would work for 3x3 three three matrices and even bigger than that. So first we want to check that the matrix is not singular. What that means is that AD minus BC is not 0 if the matrix looks like A, B, C, D. So I'll give an example of a singular matrix. One example of a singular, singular matrix would be the matrix 1, 2, 3, 6. Because when we calculate A times D is 1 times 6, which is 6, minus B times C is 2 times 3, which is 6, we get 0. So since AD minus BC is 0, that means that this matrix is singular. Which means that the inverse does not exist for this matrix. So let's do an example of a matrix that does have an inverse. So find the inverse of the matrix A, which is 2, 2, 1, 3. And first we'll check that this matrix is not singular. So multiply and subtract the diagonals AD minus BC. AD is 2 times 3, which is 6, minus 2 times 1, which is 2, is 4. So since 4 is not 0, this matrix is not singular, which means that we can find the inverse. And our next step then is to augment A with the identity matrix. So that means we write the matrix A, 2, 2, 1, 3. And then we augment with the identity, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. And now our goal is to perform row operations until we get the identity on the other side of the augment. And then the matrix that remains on the right side, where the identity used to be, will be the inverse matrix of A. So we can use any order of acceptable row operations. So we can switch rows with each other, we can multiply rows by something, we could add rows together. Um, any row operations that you can think of in order to get 1, 0, 0, 1 on the left side of this augmented matrix. So since that is our goal, to get 1, 0, 0, 1, the first thing that I want to do is just switch row 1 with row 2. So that would give us 1, 3, 2, 2, 0, 1, 1, 0. So that was the first step. All we did is switched row 1 with row 2. And I did that because our goal is to get 1, 0 on the, the top row on the left side. And now we have the 1 where we want it. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, let's try to get a 0 in this spot. The way we could get a 0 in that spot is by multiplying row 1 by 2 um, and subtracting that from row 2. So that means we're going to replace row 2 with row 2 minus 2 row 1. So we'll leave row 1 exactly as it is, 1, 3, 0, 1. And then row 2 minus 2 row 1 is 2, minus 2 times 1 is 0. 2 minus 2 times 3 is 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. And then 1 minus 2 times 0 is 1. 0 minus 2 times 1 is negative 2. Now let's try to get a 1 in this spot. The way that we could do that is by multiplying row 2 by negative 1 fourth.
So we'll keep row 1 exactly the same. 1, 3, 0, 1. And we're multiplying row 2 by negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth times 0 is 0. Negative 1 fourth times negative 4 is 1. Negative 1 fourth times 1 is negative 1 fourth. And negative 1 fourth times negative 2 is positive 1 half. And now we're getting really close to having the identity on the left side of this augmented matrix because our goal is to get 1, 0, 0, 1 on the left and then some numbers on the right side. So we're almost there. Um, we just need to do something about this 3. So what we could do next is we could take row 1 and replace it with row 1 minus 3 row 2. So we're taking row 1, we're replacing it with row 1 minus 3 times row 2. So this time we're leaving row 2 exactly the same. And then row 1 minus 3 row 2 for this first spot would be 1 minus 3 times 0 is still 1. 3 minus 3 times 1 is 0. 0 minus 3 times 1 fourth would be positive 3 fourths. And 1 minus 3 times 1 half would be 1 minus 3 halves which is negative one-half. And now we have step three completed. We've, co we've used row operations in order to get the identity and then some other matrix on the right side. So this other matrix on the right side, we're gonna call it B. So B is three-fourths, negative one-half, negative one-fourth, and one half. So it's a two by two matrix, and that matrix B is the inverse of A. So this first method uses augmented matrices in order to use o oper row operations and get the inverse matrix B. Now we're going to take that same matrix A and find the inverse B a different way. The second method only works for 2 by 2 matrices, so it won't extend to 3 by 3 or 4 by 4. And what we do is we use a formula in order to change around the matrix to get the inverse. So the formula for the inverse is 1 over AD minus BC, and then we switch A and D along the right diagonal and we change the signs of B and C along the left diagonal, but they stay in the same spot. We just change their signs. So with that same matrix A from previous, we'll find the inverse of A equals 2, 2, 1, 3. And let's start by finding AD minus BC. So for this matrix, that's 2 times 3 minus 2 times 1, which is 6 minus 2, which is 4. Okay, so that's going to be the first part of the inverse is 1 fourth in front. 1 over AD minus BC is 1 fourth. So A inverse will be 1 over 4 multiplied by 1. Now we switch A and D. So that would be 3 
times 2, or 3 and 2, and then we change the sign of b and c. So that would be negative 2 and negative 1. And now we multiply in this 1 fourth, so we do a scalar multiple of the 1 fourth in front to each of these numbers on the inside. So that would be 3 fourths, negative 2 fourths, negative 1 fourth, and 2 fourths. And if we reduce those fractions, we get 3 fourths, negative 1 half, negative 1 fourth, and positive 1 half, which is the same matrix that we got using the augmented matrices method for the inverse. But this method, like I said, only works for 2 by 2 matrices.